expectation of a random variable. In the last class, I had already discussed this definition of expectation, definition of variance. Variance is also a, spe a special kind of expectation, but that expectation is second order kind of things. And uh, variance is talking about variability of uh, uh, values of random variables. Okay, how it varies variabilities. And expectation is talking about representation of number. That means we, if you are having various numbers, then someone have to uh, come to represent those various numbers. Like in this class, there are various students. Okay, so one would be class re representative. Class representative is expectation kind of things. What we call it, rep representing the class. And likewise, uh, a student in this class. And likewise, uh, expectation having the same feature. So here in today's class, in just we call the cap of uh, last lecture that we had discussed definition of uh, conditional aspect, uh, definition of expectation as a weighted sum of uh, discrete random variable. Weighted sum of discrete random variable, the weight is provided by the corresponding probability mass function of the random variable that we had already discussed. And if you are willing to see in, uh, try to relate it with, uh, with your uh, plus two, up to plus two mathematics, what you had seen uh, in your high school, then you can call it that averaging the numbers, averaging the numbers, summing the number divided by total counts. So that kind of thing. So very layman approach that we call it equally likely or uniform approach. So same thing is here, there in the, First instant approach happens to be uniform law or equally likely approach. So that's your probability of each one is 1 by n there. That so if you keep on increasing n, then you will see that it is converging to this expectation. Okay. Likewise, if you have seen, if you are having a uh, random variable x, a discrete random variable x, you, then you can come up with function of that discrete random variable that we are calling it g of x. So g of x that we denote it by y and y is again a random variable. So if y is again a random variable, then you are having two different approach of computing expectation of y. One, that one is based on the definition of uh, expectation as a weighted y, sum of weighted y, weight is provided by corresponding probability mass function of y or you will compute it by expected value rule that you know that this you got it from the weighted sum of weighted y you got it so i had given name this one is definition one or uh, this one is uh, two we call it two okay so two is better for application point of view and one is for definition point of view Okay, then I had discussed about uh, variance of a discrete random variable as a, uh, simply I will call it uh, expectation of a square of mean repeated random, random variable. Expectation of E always meant for expectation and uh, here in the argument, uh, expectation is an operator and within the breaker, whatever we are having that we call it argument. So either if it is a very complex form, we can give a simple name Y we call it y. y is what? A square of mean repeated random variable. So here we are computing expectation of y. And further if you simplify it as per expected value uh, rule, it is coming as uh, weighted sum of this uh, y. This one is y. This was a small y. We call it a small y. And this one is the weight is here actually provided by the probability mass function of x. Okay, and if you simplify it further, then you got the very uh, interesting uh, feature of this one. This is, these are very easy to compute. Here, expectation of x square minus a square of expectation of x. So, expectation of x we call it first moment, expectation of x square we call it second moment. As you raise the power of random variable, you are getting different, different moment. So, there later we will call, uh, we will discuss moment generating function. That means with the help of that, we can generate various moments, expectation of x, expectation of x square, expectation of x cube, expectation of x to the power 4, likewise, those are various moments that we call it, okay. And we had already seen that and also if you know the variance, variance is talking about variability of x with itself. Now, if you generalize it to x and second x you replace by another random variable y, then you talk about covariance of x and y. And covariance of x and y is also, actually it is generalization of variance and we are defining it as expectation of these two mean deviated random, product of these two mean deviated random variable. And if you simplify, then you are getting this power. Expectation of x into y minus 
product of corresponding classification in simple so this you can call it computational definition or computational form uh, uh, this one is called second uh, this one is the definition form you call it the primal definition form what we call it uh, this one is the computational form generally in computational perspective we always go for the second definition so i had already discussed all those possible concept in uh, expectation category now we will talk about computation of expectation in various for various dis, uh, discrete random variable so the simplest happens to be uh, bernoulli random variable we had already discussed i think in last class we had already seen. so expectation of uh, we had already seen that expectation of bernoulli random variable with probability of success p it is equal to the same probability of success and the variance is uh, coming as probability of success multiplied with probability of failure p into 1 minus p okay so this we have already seen regarding uh, bernoulli random variable now today we will talk about uh, expectation of and variance of uh binomial random variable so uh, what is binomial random variable binomial random variable you can say that it is generalization from bernoulli random variable bernoulli random variable is talking about uh, one uh, number of success in one trial and uh, binomial random variable is talking about x number of success in n trial x number of success in n trial if you denote it by x if you denote it by y then you will call it y number of success in n trial so that's why n is the parameter first parameter and p is the probability of success it is already coming with respect to each bernoulli trial okay so the corresponding probability mass function you had already seen that here remember that in the last class when i would i was discussing binomial random variable the notation was x now here i have taken notation y so this notation happens to be dummy kind of nature so you can keep on change notation as per requirement why because here notation for uh, bernoulli random variable i have already taken x so that's why i am taking notation for uh, binomial as y you can take it x there is no any issue okay uh, so in the exam if you are willing to compute uh, expectation of binomial random variable you can proceed with x there is no any issue there is there will be no single mark cut okay okay there will be no any mark reduction so simply all these are dummy notation what we call it uh, so here uh, probability mass function of binomial random variable we had already seen what is that that one is n choose y p to the power y into 1 minus p to the power n minus y and y is observing value 0 to n 0 1 2 3 up to n these are the number number of possible successes okay now if you talk about expectation of y how will compute expectation of y that means weighted sum of y the uh, weight of y is p of y probability mass function of y we will multiply and probability mass function of y is taking binomial term like this one. y into n choose y p to the power y 1 minus uh, p uh, whole to the power n minus y okay now we do little bit uh, computation here like uh, uh, here we try to see all we will keep only those terms which contains y inside the sum and less other things will take it out take it out okay which is independent of y here summation is with respect to y so that is the variability okay so uh, as per the law of uh, uh, binomial coefficient we can write here n choose y as n into n minus y n n sorry n minus y one choose y minus y this one is very simple identity identity that means this you can easily prove it just up expand this and you will see the formula it won't take much time if you are willing to prove it either you proceed with uh, from lhs or from rhs you will be able to uh, establish this identity n minus one choose y minus 1 multiplied with And you can try as a homework. If you are facing problem, then let me know. I will again clear it in the classroom. Okay, it is n. Uh, 
okay so it is very simple identity okay so what we will do here okay y will also come here y time okay you can replace it this is a very simple identity if you expand it you will come to see the form of that okay so what you do here uh, we have replaced y into n choose y by n into n minus 1 choose y minus 1 so here what is n this n it is independent of y we can take it out of the summation and inside the summation we are, what we are having uh, n minus 1 uh, choose y minus 1 p to the power y 1 minus p to the power y and here what we will do uh, smartly here we will take uh, 1 p out then remaining we will have p minus y minus p into y minus 1 and n minus y we can write n uh, n minus 1 minus of bracket y minus 1 easily we can keep in that format so n into p we can take it out here from here n into p we can take it out and in the summation what we will have n into p we can take it out and in the inside the summation we will have uh, y varies from if you are taking y equal to 0 0 thing will come there so what is the just indexing game what what value y will take here 1 onward 1 onward if you put in 0 that will be 0 itself uh, that one is uh, not uh, uh, so it uh, y will take value 1 onward so just i'm keeping as it is and here n minus 1 choose y minus 1 p to the power y minus 1 you can note down in your notebook if you are willing to 1 minus p to the power n minus 1 minus whole of y minus 1 so if you simplify it will be n minus y it will look like so that simplified form i'm writing it n minus y our summation here it varies from 1 to n minus 1 1 to n minus 1 so that means you are talking about uh, uh, summation of that means uh, you, uh, you, here you are talking about uh, n minus 1 Bernoulli trials and what is the sum of this one and this is the probability mass function for uh, binomial random variable with n minus 1 Bernoulli trial okay so what would be this summation one it would be as per definition of a probability mass function of binomial random variable this quantity would be equal to one and so n time p into one is n p so it is very easy to compute uh, expectation of binomial random variable that one is n time p that means n is the number of trial the par first parameter p is the probability of success you are multiplying the parameter ask him to get up firstly that a student ask him uh, because you are just not getting proper sleep in, at night so that's why all these are happening and uh, all these are uh, you are having very good companion like cell phone killing your time and also your eyes affecting your eyes so now we will compute second moment expectation of y square so what you have to do here uh, that means what is expectation of y square it is weighted sum of y square the weight is provided by probability mass function of y weight is provided probability mass function of y and do same kind of algebra here y square uh, here what would be sum of y square n choose y p to the power y 1 minus p to the power n minus y so again there is an identity y square n choose y is equal to n p it is coming for n into y 
n minus 1 choose y minus 1 this p is taken from p to the power y okay so again ag another identity you got it what is that y square y square and choose all these are coming from the definition of uh, this combin uh, combinatorial formula co binomial coefficient usually you will get to know, prove it it is equal to n into y n minus what I am doing it here in it is actually same first one I have multiplied y both side multiplied y both sides this is the previous one okay it is a previous one okay so again do same simplification uh, what you do take common uh, and p take out it is independent of uh, p and if you simplify it is coming very taking very simple form uh, np whole square, np square plus np times 1 minus p if you simplify it you will get this result actually the, you are getting this and then uh, Actually, uh, this one is uh, NP you have taken out, but here what uh, scenario you have to take it, uh, little bit uh, simplification is there, not complicated one is. If you do come uh, simplification from the binomial theorem, you will come to see this result. Okay. And uh, the uh, second moment it is coming like this way. So you have completed first moment that expectation of Y, you have completed second moment that one is uh, expectation of Y square. Then what is the variance of y as per definition, simplify, computational definition of uh, variance of y? What is that? It is uh, uh, second moment that expectation of y square. minus a square of expectation of y. If you simplify here all these, I will just write simplified for. It is just coming as n time p into 1 minus p. How does it look like? It is generalization uh, of uh, Bernoulli random variable. Bernoulli is having how many a? n? 1. Binomial is having n. That's why n is coming here. So this one is the variance of binomial random variable. Now I am taking very interesting kind of problem. It is based on hypergeometric distribution. And again here what is like that? There are 5 candidate for 2 job. There are 5 candidate for for two job, three of the candidate are women and two are men. Let x be the number of women, then we have to find the probability mass function of x, expectation of x and variance of x. In total three questions are there, x is number of women, okay, hired, number of women hired. So simply uh, if you are talking about x be the number of women hired, then what are the possible value of x? What are the possible value of x? What are the possible value of x? 0, 1, 2, 3. 3 women are there, no? See here, count. Sorry, sorry, 2. Oh, 2. 2 will be hired. So, 0, 1, 2. Thank you for recall. So, uh, women hired. So, we have to see the sentencing as well. 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, these are the possible value. So if x equal to zero, that means uh, what is the probability mass function of x equal to zero? How many possible selection? Simply, if you talk about how many possibilities of for two jobs out of five people, it would be five choose two. Ten possibilities are there. If five choose two, ten simplify it. Ten possibilities are there. Okay. Then if you talk about uh, uh, x equal to zero, that means zero women is um, getting hired. That means both job went to men. Okay. So that means three, uh, so that uh, uh, counting how it happens, it happens three choose two, two choose 
2. So, what is the competition? It is equal to 1. So, what is the probability mass function at 0? It is 1 by 10, 1 out of 10. Okay. If, if you say x equal to 1, then 1 woman has been hired. That means 1 will come from main segment. So, uh, 3 choose 1 or uh, 2 choose 1. 3 choose 1. 1 women from, 1 hired person from women, 1 hired person from men. So, how many ways? 6 ways. Okay. So, what is the probability mass function of at 1? It is 6 by 10. Probability of observing x equal to 1. Now, if x equal to 2, that means both job given uh, to women. That means 3 choose 2 and 2 choose 0 from main segment 0 job so in how many way it will it will happen 3 way so what is the probability mass function at 2 it is 3 by 10 and if you verify it does it satisfy all the properties of being a probability mass function that means whether these values are between 0 and 1 okay in the interval 0 to 1 it is in the interval 0 to 1 second whether sum is 1 yes and third one is just competition. Okay. So, we can say that this one is a legitimate probability mass function. So, fine, we have already computed. Next task is very easy one compute the probability mass function. Oh, sorry, compute the expectation. So, as a weighted sum of x. So, you can easily compute it. The computation is 12 by 10 expectation. And then compute second moment expectation of, uh, expectation of x square. That means weighted sum of x square. And if you compute, it is 18 by 10. Okay. And if you apply the definition the relation between variance and these two expectation, then you will get the variance is 36 by 100. So this is the competition, simple competition. Okay. Now uh, the third kind of example, we will take it uh, geometric random variable. When you are getting geometric random variable, where you, when you are performing Bernoulli trial. Okay, till first success, till first success, you keep on. So again, what is the parameter? Probability of success in a Bernoulli trial, P the parameter. So it is one kind of geometric things. So here we will see that uh, expectation is taking very interesting form that the geometric sum will come here. So here we have to find weighted sum of Z, the weight is provided by corresponding probability mass function. That one is P into 1 minus P to the power Z minus 1. So it is a geometric sequence. So it is one kind of we are performing uh, sum of geometric series. Okay, Z time this one. So it very much simple to find sum of geometric series. If here you know that P is less than 1. P is less than 1. That we call it common ratio. 1 minus P is the common ratio here actually. 1 minus P is the common ratio. So easily you can find it. And the uh, sum of... Uh, 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 this uh, this sum is equal to one my, uh, one by p. You can verify it. Yeah, you can compute it later. If you are willing to compute, you can compute it later. It is simple uh, geometric series. Next, uh, we are willing to compute variance. So we will not to go to compute the expectation of z. Uh, here, a very interesting kind of re uh, result is coming from here itself. Uh, if you are willing to compute uh, expectation of z into z minus one, it is taking very simple form like this. Expectation of z into z minus one, and if you simplify from here, is if you play uh, play with uh, uh, this definition, you will get very simple form. So little bit homework I am giving you. Try yourself. If you are facing problem, then I will help you. So these are very simple. Uh, in in uh, books you will not get directly. Uh, I am giving little bit exercises so that you can do little bit exercises as well so in order to understand. Then you will see the intuition of how all, all these are coming. And if you simplify, I have written in this form. Why? Because the summation, this summation is very easy to compute. And this summation is in finite summation. Z is taking value 1, 2, 3, 4 and it will go up to infinity. So in finite, all these are in finite uh, summation. So it is a series sum. It is a series sum. Uh, you can apply for partial sum or various other kind of things if you are facing further problems. Okay. With respect to variability. Do you know partial uh, fraction or not? Partial fraction, do you know what? In the competition of integration, you might have already uh, utilized that. So those kind of things you can recall. All those, those are very interesting kind of technique, always uh, algebraic technique, very helpful in competition summation or integration. So here, easily you will get uh, 
uh, the expectation of z into z minus 1 it is coming to uh, into uh, 1 minus p to the power uh, divided by p square, uh, p square. And if you uh, uh, from here uh, you will just simplify this. Simplify this. You will. Uh, that's why I have computed this one. Not e to the power expectation of z square. I have. So simplify this. What you will get? Uh, this uh, here I have written. So here I have. I am writing variance of z as uh, expectation of z square minus square of expectation of z. Okay. And if you simplify further, how you will write this one? It can be written in term of uh, expectation of z. Into z minus one plus expectation of z minus a square of expectation of z. Just ex expand it. What are the term you will get here? Expectation of z square minus z. Expectation of z square minus z. So little bit algebra is there. Okay, little bit algebra is there. You are getting it like that way. So. Variance directly it will take. The, so you are having the form of this. You are having this. You have computed 2 into 1 minus p divided by p square. You are having expectation of z. That means also you are. Uh, that means you know this value. This this would be just uh, 1 by p square. This one is 1 by p. And this one you have already seen computed. And substitute all this value here. You will get variance of z. That one is 1 minus p divided by p square 1 minus p divided by p square so these are little bit technical algebra you should do that okay now uh, the fourth one is uh, poisson distribution poisson uh, expectation of poisson expectation and variance of poisson distribution it is very much interesting that expectation and variance both would be equal to lambda the parameter yes thought process was like uh, uh, decomposition of this uh, this in this form decomposition if you simplify this simplify this keep on simplifying here what is expectation of Okay, z into z minus 1. So, do little bit algebra here inside. What you got? It is very childish kind of thing. So, see it here. Uh, z square. And if you simplify, what you will get? So, that is why I am saying that sometime if something I have written. Uh, there I, I not given complete uh, uh, derivation means uh, those are very simple things you should think over that then you will come to know it is expectation of z square minus expectation of z but is it uh, variance is it variance Various contain this one expectation of z square and a square of expectation of z. So what we have to do? We have to do plus minus of that. Plus minus of that. that. Go for directly. Competition would be tough. I I never I uh, object to you. Uh, there would be no cut mark. There is no uh, mark depreciation or any uh, negative kind of things. Okay, you go for that. This one is a smart technique. What I say that uh, it will save your time, consume time. So all these are what. Uh, I have mentioned. Okay, go for faster technique, faster but validated one, not like a, a ad hoc approach. This one is not ad hoc, validated one. And you know that. Do I need to derive derive further? What I, how I will convert this one into into variance? Easily we can convert. Okay. So the computation of uh, expectation of poison is very easy. Why? It is ju just dealing with exponential series or expansion of e to the power x 
expansion of it is power lambda will come here it is power lambda so it is dealing with that and very easily you can establish that expectation of uh, poison is lambda and variance of uh, poison distribution is also lambda both are lambda that one is dealing with the exp uh, exponential rate uh, that it is power x expansion of it is power x okay or it is power lambda is coming here any question till now Okay, fine. Whatever required thing is there, I have already mentioned there. And in mathematics, your approach would be always that uh, whatever concept is mentioned there, recall the main thing re related with that. Here, W is Poisson distribution, uh, uh, Poisson random variable, and that means it, it distribution is Poisson distribution. Then we have to recall the, what is Poisson distribution. It is already given here. Another things would be based on that. That you can count. And what are the values that W is taking? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like that. It is similar to binomial, but in, in binomial P is moderate and here P is very small. And hence N is very large. Okay. Now, uh, any question till now? I will go for next segment that I have computed uh, expectation, expectation and variance for almost every, almost all kind of uh, uh, discrete random variable. Okay, now we will talk about conditional expectation. So conditional expectation is coming that again conditioning, so there would be two random variables. And we, we are willing to, uh, why, why you will say that two random variable? Actually, uh, from the question, we will come up with two random variables. So, uh, you have been asked to compute expectation of x. Okay. You have been asked to compute expectation of x. And there is no probability mass function of x given to you. How you will compute that? There is no probability mass function of x is given to you. How you will compute? Then you will say that give me a probability mass function of x as well, then the person will say no, wisely you have to find something else. So you will, you will look for something else, you will look for another random variable and what would be that? Y. So you will look for Y, the simplest scenario. With respect to Y, okay, you will be able to compute uh, probability mass function of x, x given y. Some observation of y you will come up with that. Okay. And you know about that. So it is coming like this way. All these are interesting thing in sense that it would be conditional probability mass function of x given y okay so when you are saying that conditional probability mass function of x given y this one is conditional probability and it is no more a uh, deterministic quantity why due to y y is coming random in sense all possible all variable here y i have i haven't taken a specific value of y so it is no more a uh, deterministic quantity it is a uh, random variable, random variable, you can call it g of y, random variable g of y. So you have to find expectation again. If it is a random variable, you have to find expectation of again with respect to the outer expectation with respect to y, inner expectation with respect to x in condition manner. And here this we call it law of iterated expectation. Expectation of conditional expectation is equal to expectation of x. So, so this approach is, so this we are getting it through conditioning and this approach is very interesting and more intuitive in order to compute complicated uh, expectation of complicated random variable when uh, probability mass function of x is not given to you and that's why in one example I had already discussed. What was that example? What was that example? that Professor May, question was related with po co Professor May. The probability distribution of x was very simple, it was 1 by 3. 
but what was the probability distribution of y it was very difficult to compute but conditional probability distribution of y given x was easy to compute it was there and once we we, we had computed joint probability mass function of x and y after that through marginalization we come up with probability mass function of y so that question is really uh, very nice question for better understanding of probability if you are willing to understand probability in, in a really deeper way so that one is uh, through conditioning if you are coming through conditioning so that one is very nice example given in batiska's book you can look that book as well so here we are talking about conditional probability mass function uh, conditional probability sorry conditional expectation so prior to that i will take one example okay so here question is coming that you roll two six sided dice generally in india we are having only six sided dice uh, first dice we call it d1 and second dice we are calling it d2 then we define two random variable first one is sum of d1 and d2 d1 plus d2 and why uh, second random variable we are defining d2 that means outcome of second uh, dice now then we have to find first thing conditional probability mass function of x given y then second thing we have to find conditional expectation of x when y is observing just one value 6 okay and third you have to find conditional expectation of x when y is generic in nature y may be 1 y may be 2 y may be 3 y may be 4 y may be 5 or y may be 6 all these are y is related with second dice okay that kind of thing so we have to compute these three how will compute these three up to what we know from there we have to compute all this how will compute so the computation is followed like this way for given y equal to 6 first we can compute probability mass function of x given 6 i should write here uh, this i should write it actually conditional probability mass function of x given 6 but remember that this 6 is not from the first dice it is from second dice so you should know that that little bit information you should keep it so here that's where we that information if you are willing to recall your mind then it is actually x given y that's why we are writing all this so what is the conditional uh, probability mass function for this one if you dice second is having outcome 1 by 6 what is the probability of observing x what is the probability of observing x what first talk, talk about what are the value that x will observe if y equal to 6 what are the value x will observe just uh, tell me x is what d1 plus d2 d2 is 6 d2 is 6 then what x will observe 6 plus 1 6 plus 2 6 plus 3 6 plus uh, 4 and like that so up to 12 it will go up to so these are the possible value how many values are there 6 values all are equally likely there is no any special information that uh, phase 1 is very pri uh, prime than phase 2 something like that such thing is not there so conditional probability mass function f x given 6 is 1 by 6 okay we have computed probability conditional probability mass function of x so correspondingly we will compute expectation of x but here x, expectation of x in condition manner given expectation of x given 6 condition on 6 okay so x and here the probability mass function will come not probability mass function of x conditional probability mass function of x why because of this conditioning so that we have to multiply x into conditional probability mass function of x right now don't worry about that how that one is coming and uh, the, all these values are given, given here so 1 by 6 and sum of the, all these if you simplify the value is coming 9.7 9.5 but if i ask what is the uh, okay uh, simply okay uh, with respect to so how many such conditional uh, probability would be there and how many such uh, conditional 
uh, expectation would be there. How many such conditional expectation would be there? How many con such conditional expectation? Six, six con conditional expectation. So each one occurs with different different probability. Different different probability. So again, you can say that if you talk about talk about variability of this conditional expectation, it varies varies with different different probability. So again, this uh, this conditional expectation is taking random random number and it is a random variable. Okay. Now further how uh, that randomness you will see. It. Let us recall uh, W equal to D1. We are giving name another name. Then X would be what? X would be W plus Y. Y is equally what? D2. Value of D2 means D2Y. It is face is also 1 and outcome is we are uh, if you, 1 is itself a number so we can call random variable. We can associate it with that. So that's way. So uh, X is W plus Y and also we, dice 1 and dice 2 do we see that any dependency no both are independent so we can say that w and uh, y both are independent to each other so we are willing to compute conditional expectation for each observation of y we are not i am taking a fixed value of y we are talking about this y is very arbitrary in nature remember that there is a difference between arbitrary and randomness don't confuse with arbitrary and don't confuse with randomness. Okay. So that you have to, those are just ling English alphabet and we are uh, having one English language to read all these English. Okay. So here we are computing conditional expectation of Y given X. So as per definition of expectation, we will talk about weighted sum of X and the weight is provided by conditional probability mass function of X, not by probability mass function of x. Remember that. Why? Because here we are having conditioning. So weighted sum of x. The weight is this one. This is the weight. Okay. Now what is x? If you see here, x, x is w plus y. y, w plus y. So one, once given y, y is fixed. What is varying here? Within the summation, what is varying? w is varying. So x Variation of X is deal with variation of W. The summation, the, if you take summation with respect to X, this will be replaced by summation with respect to W. Y is fixed now in that case. So that situation is coming. If you take summation, Y is not involving W. So if you do summation, then it would be W plus this protein mass function. Uh, sorry, W into this protein mass function plus y into this probability mass function y into this is a probability mass function it is always satisfying normalizing condition so sum of that uh, this probability mass function with respect to w would be what one that means y into one plus the first component we will uh, uh, it is w plus probability mass function it will be not equal to one remember that are you getting it this me meaning of this or not everyone getting meaning of this or not I have decomposed this summation W plus Y. I once I multiplied W with this, and another time I multiplied the Y with this. And we remember that Y is independent of W, so Y will come out of the summation. Then inside we will have just probability conditional probability mass function of W. Okay, and we are summing for all W. Then sum of conditional probability mass function is uh, that one is also equal to one. So that's why here one is coming here. But when W is multiplied with conditional probability mass function, it becomes what? Aspectation of W. Aspectation of W. Are you getting that or not? The W is what? What kind of variable? W is talking about outcome in the second dice. What are the outcome? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Just do find the average of that with the probability mass function. 1 by 6. Each point, point is equally likely. 6 points are there. Sum uh, uh, 1 up to 6 and divide by 6. What value you will get? Do the sum. Do Everyone do the sum. In the notebook do the sum. Sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 3.5. So this value. So the, this one is what actually average of outcome that come in the second dice and that one is 3.5 so 3.5 so what you got here conditional probability mass function of x given y it is actually y plus 1 
here this y we have taken one arbitrary y okay so talk about all y if you talk about all y so that means you will replace the small y by capital y here if you replace this uh, this this one is one specific value of y if you are talking all possible y then you will replace y equal to a small y y just y that means you will you are free to take any value of y that means so you replace this conditional probability uh, expectation by this conditional expectation what difference you observe here here just x condition on expectation of x condition of, on y that means y is free to take all any possible value of y okay and here y has already observed y a small y okay that you uh, so if that situation you observe so the in the same same derivation fashion this a small y will be replaced by capital y random variable so what you observe the expectation of x given y is what y plus 3.5 and what is this one it is function of y linear function so function so we will call it g of y so conditional expectation is a random variable it is function of y it happens to be function of the variable through which we have introduced the conditioning through which so that thing is coming here okay so now that's why it is very much essential to discuss conditional expectation in detail so it is one motivating example what we have discussed as per based on definition of expectation now we will see conditional expectation so conditional expectation is coming like this way consider we are having two random variable x and y in the same experiment then then conditional expectation of x condition on the another random variable y observing a value a small y it is defined as uh, weighted sum of x the and weight is provided by conditional probability mass function of x condition on that a specific value y okay and it would be if you after uh, exhausting this sum with respect to x x will be exhausted what remaining thing we will have y we are not taking summation with respect to y so only y thing we will have so conditional expectation of y condition on y equal to small y it happens to be function of small y so that we, that's where we denote it by g of y in the last case we you have already seen now that is for each possible observation on y of a random variable second random variable is capital y uh, we have seen conditional expectation of uh, y is observing value small y it is actually g of y and hence conditional expectation defines a random variable as g of y that means if you replace this uh, a small y by just capital y that means you are free to take any value of uh, y in that case it becomes g of y the small y will be replaced by capital y and we know that what does it pick up it is function of a random variable and function of a random variable is again a random variable and that this function of a random variable is a very specific function of a random variable and that one is conditional expectation of x given y so it is a what we call it is a random variable so remember that con conditioning introduce that but we will we will take second example the first motivating example we had already discussed second is little bit more uh, algebraic computation so we are having a random variable y which is observable one with probability 1 by 8 and two with probability 7 by 8 then we are having another random variable x we are having another random variable x uh, x uh, condition on y it is equal to 2 of y x is function of if you put condition on y through that x getting two different function of y two different then you will say the what is meaning of two different function with probability one it is this function with probability that it is different function so you are bifurcating so actually uh, all these are what these are probabilistic function these are not deterministic function so when you will come up with neural network that time you will see a lot of such kind of loss function such kind of function you will see that okay Th those are really interesting in sense so condition can x is condition on y it is actually 2 of y with probability 3 by 4 and 3 of 3 of y with uh, 3y with probability 1 by 4 if someone is saying that f of x equal to uh, you are writing f, f of x equal to uh, x square 
what does it what does it mean it is a deterministic function with probability 1 f of x equal to x square okay have you seen uh, a function like this uh, probabilistic function like f of equal to x square with probability 1 by 2 and x cube with probability 1 by 3 that kind of thing situation is coming yeah, you or you play with coin, you relate with coin. If you will get head, then f of x equal, equal to x square. If you get tail, then f of x equal to x cube. That kind of thing. So those are probabilistic nature. If it is not taking a deterministic form, a single form, then those would be uh, probabilistic nature. So that can say with x given y, it is coming like this way. Then what we have to do, we have to find conditional probability mass function of x given y and also we have to find if it is uh, we had already seen that it is in the last case it is a random variable if it is a random variable then definitely uh, we are just dealing in discrete random variable then we have to find the corresponding probability mass function we have to find that okay so if y equal to 1 how many value y is observing two value either one or two if y equal to 1 what is x condition on y equal to 1 what would be that if y is equal to 1, then it would be uh, 2 with probability 3 by 4 and uh, 3 with probability 1 by 4. Okay. And so, remember that uh, again, uh, x is observing x given y equal to 1 observing this value. So, you have to find conditional expectation x given y equal to 1. So, 2, what is the probability of observing 2? 3 by 4. What is the uh, probability of observing uh, 3? 1 by 4. What, so, you got the expectation of x given 1. y equal to 1, just call it 1. Sort it to 1 if you are having a lot of uh, uh, issue with notation. So, so uh, expectation of x given 1 is equal to 9 by 4. Likewise, if you take y equal to 2, what is x given 2? Actually, I should write 2. It is what? 4 with probability 3 by 4, 6 with probability 1 by 4. So likewise, what is the conditional expectation of x given 2? Call it just 2. It is 4 into 3 by 4 plus 6 into 1 by 4, total this one. So conditional expectation of x given y equal to 1, it is taking two different value with different different probability. Uh, it is taking value. 9 by 4 with what, what probability? Anyone say with what probability as conditional expectation of x given y equal to 1 uh, observing 9 by 4? With what probability it is observing? What is the probability of observing 9 by 4? Anyone? 1 by nicely. Why? y equal to 1 exists with probability 1 by 8. It is given here. It is little bit complicated. It is not like simple simply what is you are doing lot of computations. So here you can see this one is the first thing. This one is the second thing. All you should know all these. Okay. So 9 by 4 exists with probability 1 by 8. I have written everything here itself. If you are trying to answer from here, then you are not in right way. You should answer from the previous information. Sequence. There is a sequencing. You should not see uh, after the calculation. You should before in order to answer something. You should see prior to calculation. Okay, and likewise 18 by 4, it exists with probability 7 by 2. When, why? Because you are taking y equal to 2. y equal to 2 appears with probability 7 by 8. So, this conditional uh, expectation is taking uh, two value, 9 by 4 with probability 1 by 8, 18 by 4 with probability 7 by 8. Okay, so it is a, this conditional uh, expectation is a random variable. Okay, if it is a random variable, two time I have taken the okay so we can see it here so z is a z equal to conditional expectation of x given y conditional okay it is taking 9 by 4 with probability 1 by 8 and 18 by 4 with probability 7 by 8 okay and uh, further I have simplified it in more simple way so what is the what is the probability mass function of uh, this uh, z we are giving notation to this one this we denote it by z notation. So, what is the probability mass function of this conditional expectation? It is 1 by 8 when z is observing 9 by 4 and it is uh, probability mass function is 7 by 8 when z is observing 18 by 
for. So this is a desired protein mass function what we are looking for. So we have we have completed everything. Okay. Any question till now regarding conditional expectation? Conditional aspect, expectation is really very interesting that I will provide if someone is very much interested in solving problems through conditioning then you should go for all these. Then there is a uh, very interesting law that one is law of iteration. This, this one is very important. What at the beginning I had told that means uh, you have been asked to compute uh, expectation of x. And, and then you will say that what is the property mass function of x. Then that person will say no, you haven't been given property mass function of x. Then how you will compute? How you will compute? But don't worry, just you keep your thing with yourself. I know that uh, as per definition of expectation of x, uh, it is uh, weighted sum of x. Okay. And further we know, if it, this one is not given, no worry. I will ask joint property mass function. And I will say that I will marginalize you in order to get P of X. So that's way how you will marginalize. You will marginalize by exhausting Y from the joint protein mass function of X and Y. Then uh, in the question itself, there is no joint protein mass function of X. So what you will say that uh, pro joint, we know that uh, joint protein mass function, we write it as uh, multiplication rule by using multiplication rule, how you write it. Oh, we will we'll look for another random variable which are simple in, in observation, simple in observation like in the, uh, the professor may question that uh, observation of x was very simple. Observation of x was very simple, observation of y was complicated. So which one is simpler, simpler we like it, uh, we, will, we will write it first. So some simpler random variable we will look for in the question and that would be y probability of y into then after that we will look for x from the scenario of y that would be uh, conditional probability of x given y. Are you getting meaning of this what I am saying? Okay. So same thing what I have written it. So this one is joint probability mass function and exhaust here y. You talk about all possible y you are talking about. So that is way. So in total actually P of x has written like in this way, like in this way, marginalization or total law of total property also you can call it. Okay. So what do you do? Uh, do anyone, how many of you know uh, change of order of integration? Haven't I studied that? Change of order of integration in plus 2? Not. Have you seen Thomas and Finney in plus 2? I think it is part of calculus you will come to. Change of order integration very interesting. So if you are having function of two variable, you haven't seen function of two variable, how you will talk about change of order integration? If you are having function of two variable, uh, that, that f, f of x comma y and then uh, you are willing to integrate that. Then you, so that means function of two variable, if you talk about domain of the function of two variable, it would be what? Plain x and y, variability of x and y. And like uh, uh, what would be integrating element, it would be not dx, it would be dx into dy, dx into aerial element. The integrating element would be aerial ele element. And there uh, integration, actually it is involving integration with respect to x and inter integration with respect to y jointly. So double integration will come. Integration, integration again. So there uh, you will say that if uh, f of x, y, it is function of x and y both, then uh, which uh, argument we will take first? You will be confused a little bit. Uh, change of, uh, actually it is very common question uh, in calculus actually. Uh, sometime you will, uh, law of iteration there we call it. Sometime you will integrate x first, then another time you will integrate y first. So that kind of things will come there. So it is very much geometric in nature. You have to go to domain and draw the function and see simplicity. Which one is simpler? Proceed with that first. And there law of Fabni, Fabni law will come there. That one is helping a lot. Interesting. Same, similar, similar thing is coming also in permutation. So simply I would like to say that uh, integration, if you do uh, two summation and summation is a uh, double, it is a double, two summations are there. 
and summation is a finite number if it is a finite number then it is uh, that means finite means it will give a number it will it would be not like infinity or something like that okay if it is a finite number then always it is possible to interchange the summation interchanging here summation uh, what tell me which one is the first summation here here in this which one is the first summation the inner one is the first summation outer one is the later later summation first we we are willing to get uh, probability mass function of x from joint probability mass function of x so we need need to uh, what exhaust x by summing with respect to x so that that is the internal sum okay and then we have to take summation with respect to x in order to get expectation of x that one is the outer sum so here uh, interchange now your inner sum becomes with respect to x outer sum is with respect to y so remember that simply right now if you don't understand aha this one is happening uh, just see that uh, due to finite nature of this sum we have introduced interchanging otherwise if you are willing to really understand this one how it is happening go to first understand uh, that uh, change of order of integration or summation in thomas pinney that one is very good book in change of order of integration is always good uh, otherwise if some time permit then i will discuss that but it is not part of this course so i will not go in uh, detail so here uh, now look here inside what is this one it is weighted sum of x and the weight is provided by conditional probability mass function of x then what we will call it it is conditional expectation of x given y what is this one it is weighted sum of x and the weight is provided by conditional probability mass function of x not probability mass function of x okay so this quantity is what conditional probability this quantity is conditional probability mass function of x this you will call it uh, this com what it completely call it conditional probability the uh, conditional expectation of x given y as per definition of conditional probability mass function and here uh, the out the what remaining thing we are having conditional probability mass function of x given y time probability mass function of y what quantity this we had to mention it is actually function of y g of y g of y we had call it g of y so what is this one it is as per expected value rule what we say that actually g of y into probability of observing y so it is a legitimate expectation okay summing and so same thing what i have written it here g of here you can see this g of y i have written so what you will call it it is actually expectation of g of y and g of y g of a small y is a conditional expectation of uh, a small y conditional x given a small y then uh, g of capital y would be aspect conditional expectation of x given capital y so that a small y capital replacement is there so what is this one expectation of conditional expectation will do. so it is iteration of the expectation iteration law of iterator expectation we call it so outer expectation is with respect to y inner expectation is with respect to x always remember that here you see the order uh, some book may give notation that they will call it suffix here ey or this will be ex that means inner expectation is expectation with respect to x outer expectation is expectation with respect to y so uh, we got we had to compute expectation of x and we have written it in term of expectation of conditional expectation why because y is giving very interesting or easy idea to observe x so that's where we have done that so it will help likewise we will compute actually we don't have much time likewise you will compute conditional variance conditional variance okay so conditional variance how will define uh, expectation of mean deviated 
mean deviated uh, sorry a square of mean deviated random variable condition on x conditioning everywhere okay and again condition here so again this one is conditional expectation will come here it is not uh, like uh, expectation of x will come here so conditioning everywhere is coming conditioning everywhere and uh, here uh, we will get law of variance you have been asked to compute variance of x but expectation of uh, sorry probability mass function of x is not given to you how you will compute that then again conditioning technique is coming what you will do here we have already seen that conditional expectation you can easily compute and conditional expectation is a random variable so it will have expectation and variance so we will compute variance and likewise uh, variance of uh, so we will compute so expectation and we will compute variance of x given y as well so variance of x can be decomposed into two factor expectation of cut conditional variance of x given y variance of conditional random variable x given y plus variance of conditional expectation x given y this decomposition i will talk in later okay this notation that this time it may be little bit cumbersome but derivation i will talk about derivation also may look little bit cumbersome but when you are solving problems based on these two technique you will enjoy a lot you will see that how smart to solve problem not like uh, we are going for very classical technique something like that so like how that means it is giving innovation to solve problem innovative these are innovative techniques so in next class we will discuss in detail uh, regarding this and few more examples okay